So we have the properties that we're going to be using right here on the board. They're the matrix algebra properties of multiplication. <coughs> well, foil is not the great word. Multiply. Oh, expand, whatever. Do math. So expand A plus B squared. All right, before we expand, and A and B are matrices, let's talk about dimensions of A and B. So if I'm going to add two matrices A and B together, what can you say about their dimensions? They're same. They have to be the same dimensions. What we're then going to do is square this. And remember, the only kind of matrix you can square or take to powers are square matrices. So just for this to make sense, A and B have to both be square matrices of the same size. So we write that A comma B are elements of R N by N. So that's how we write that out very compactly. So how do we square? You just multiply this by itself. But we're going to carefully use the rules above. So the rule we need is either the very top one on the board or the second to the top one. And I can use either one depending on how I want to distribute. So I can take A plus B and distribute it to A and to the B over here. So we're going to carefully, and again, I'm just using the rule I put an asterisk next to at the top. So I'm just distributing across addition. So we get A times A plus B plus B times A plus B. Now we're going to use that same rule twice more. One on each piece. We're going to distribute again. So we got AA plus AB plus BA plus BB, and AA is A squared. So this should have all made sense so far. Now I'm going to write something incorrect, and I want you to tell me what's wrong with it. So if you as an algebra student, this would be correct. But why is this not correct when we use matrices? Because you can change the order of matrices Yep. If you change the order of a product in matrices, sometimes the product's the same, but almost all the time the product will be different. So generally, multiplication is not commutative. So you cannot combine A, B, and B, A. Those are not the same thing. So if you FOIL, you get four terms. You don't get the kind of inside outside terms that'll be the same. All right, so I just want to warn you a little bit on algebra and I'll write that non-rule up with the other rules. So I'll write multiplication is not commutative. So AB is not going to be BA. Things get a little crazier. There are some matrices A, B you can multiply, but if you switch the order, you can't multiply them. So certain matrices you could multiply, but if you change the order, the product doesn't even exist. Now we're going to look at transpose properties. These are going to be the algebraic transpose properties. So if you transpose, transpose, what do you think that will accomplish? So transposing twice. Think about what transposing does. Takes your matrix and reflects it. 
and then you're going to take your matrix and reflect it. So it'll be the original. So transposing twice is the original. Another way to think about that is transpose is its own inverse. If you transpose, how do you untranspose? You transpose again. So transposing is its own inverse. It's kind of similar to taking a reciprocal with numbers. If you take reciprocal of five, for example, you get one fifth. Take reciprocal again, you get five. So it is a similar uh, property to that. So next up, alpha, so scalar products with a transpose. You could bring the scalar outside of the transpose operation. You can do the same thing with powers, assuming your matrix is squared. So a to the nth power transpose, that's the same as a transpose to the nth power. And if you add two matrices and transpose them, that's the same as transposing them first and adding them second. And multiplication gets a little bit messed up with transposing. What it does, it anti-commutes them, meaning it turns the order backwards. First theorem, well, maybe it's not the first theorem, but maybe first in a little while. If A is a square matrix, then A plus A transpose is symmetric. And another theorem, if A is any matrix, then A, A transpose and A transpose A are both symmetric. So what does symmetric mean? I'll use the letter B for our definition. B is symmetric. Exactly when what property is true? A equals A transpose. So when the matrix is its own transpose. So in this case, when B transpose equals B. So transposing would have no effect. And the reason we use the word symmetric, because if you reflect it across that line, the, down the diagonal, you get the same matrix. So it uh, has symmetry. So that's why I use the word symmetric. So let's go ahead and prove these here. Let's prove the first one. So we're going to prove so if A is square, then A plus A T is symmetric. So what we're trying to show A plus A T is equal to what? Trying to show it's equal to itself transposed. So that's what it means for that matrix to be symmetric. What we're going to use are the properties we wrote down above. So look at those algebraic properties. I'm going to do that by zooming out. <clears throat> what property could I use here? You can just name one through five. Let's use property four. Basically says you can distribute your transpose across addition. So we're gonna use property four here. When we're proving these, you wanna start on one side and not change the other side. So the way I indicate that, I put one side in a box, meaning I'm not going to touch it. And hopefully you can turn the right side to the left side. 
So we're using property four. We have A transpose plus A transpose transpose. That's the distribute your transpose. What property do I need next? So our first one says transpose transpose is uh, identity. So this is A T plus A. We're almost there. What property do I need next? Community property of addition, which is not listed on that, but it's listed somewhere before. Addition is community of multiplication, definitely not. And there we go, that is our proof. So now we're gonna prove the second theorem. So we're going to prove A, A, T, and A, T, A are symmetric. So we'll go for the A, A, T first. What am I trying to show? A, A, T. So A, T equals A, A, T, whole thing to the T. So that's what we're trying to show. I think I have multiplication. Yep. So go ahead and use those properties. It's too far for me to scroll on the board. Everything will get too small, but you have the properties written down. So go ahead and use those properties and try to prove this. There's only five properties. Should be pretty clear which one to use first. The multiplication with the transpose, what you use first. <coughs> What is the problem? Multiplication is, not commutative. Multiplication is not commutative, so I can't do what I did last time and just change the order, unfortunately. Uh oh. Are we trying to show A transpose A as symmetric to? Yeah, we're trying to show that the first step is equal, equal to last step. not true in general for square matrices. Um, and actually, they're not square matrices, technically. Oh. The matrix A is not square. Yeah, in the definition, they switch places. When you put the, when you uh, oh. whatever. Oh. Ah, yes, I did not follow the rule. All right, so they do need to switch places, so it should be A, T, T. AT. There we go. So we're using that last property. So I was not careful. They were both A, but they're not. One of them is AT and the other one's A. So you have to very carefully swap the order and then apply transpose to both. So now we have A transpose transpose. We saw it before, that's just A, and then times AT, and that's exactly what we're trying to show. So we're done with this one. And now we're gonna show the other order. ATA is symmetric. So we wanna show ATA is ATA whole thing transposed. So this should be exactly the same. So when I apply my transpose, they switch order, and then double transpose cancels, and we are done. So that's the end of 
matrix multiplication. <clears throat> We're going to go to matrix inverses next, which is heavily, uh, which corresponds to the multipl multiplicative inverse. So we just finished how to multiply. And now we're going to look at multiplicative inverses. <coughs> so the best way to think about the word inverse is to undo or to change back or reset, something like that. So in this case, when we just say matrix inverse, What we're referring to is the multiplicative inverse. So before we look at the multiplicative inverse, let's look at uh, the additive inverse really quickly. So this, I talked about this before. So we call our additive inverse, all you do is add negative a to a. So take all the coordinates, make them negative. If you add them together, you'll get zero in every single entry. So you add a and negative a, you get the zero matrix. So that's the additive inverse. Every single matrix has an additive inverse. You just go in entries by entry and just change the signs. Every matrix has an additive inverse, super easy to find. You just make every uh, change the sign on every turn to be negative. So all matrices have additive inverses. All right, so let's forget about additive inverses. Now we're going to multiplicative inverses. So let's start with the definition. So the multiplicative inverse, and whenever you hear the word inverse, when it refers to a matrix, it's the multiplicative inverse. If you want to talk about the additive inverse, just say negative A. So don't use the word inverse for additive inverse, unless you're going to be super careful and say additive inverse, additive inverse every time. So the inverse of And n by n matrix so we'll use the notation a to the negative first so is a inverse such that So if you multiply n numerical or real number inverses, that would be a number multiplied by its reciprocal. What would you get? You would get one. So I want to put the equivalent of one here. Obviously, if I put the number one, the result of matrix multiplication is not a number ever. So that's very incorrect. But the equivalent for one is the identity matrix in n dimensions. And we saw before that <clears throat> A times the identity matrix is A, and the identity matrix times A is also A. So this identity matrix is a matrix filled up with ones in the diagonal and zeros off of the diagonal. So that is the identity matrix. So the inverse of a matrix is one you would multiply by to get to the identity. And as you can hopefully see coming, multiplication is tricky, so you can't just really quickly think of the inverse by doing something clever like switching the signs. It's way more complicated than that. Because you're kind of going across rows, columns, adding, and then you need a bunch of them to be 0 and then a few of them to be 1. However, that sounds like a linear system. 
You're multiplying two numbers together and then adding the results. So we're going to get back to solving a linear system. Uh, if such an A inverse exists, so if such an A inverse exists, then we say that A is invertible. which of course means able to be inverted. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit until I can give you a better way to detect if your matrix is going to be invertible. But for now, you will determine your matrix is invertible if you can compute the inverse. There is a sort of, there is a slightly faster way to detect if it's going to be invertible. But uh, we're not going to do that yet because we're going to just compute them now. Uh, but you can use the determinant to figure out if they're invertible or not. So our first example, we're going to show that B, the B matrix 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 4 is not invertible. So I just wrote down what it takes to be invertible. If there is such a matrix such, such that when I multiply by it, I get the identity. So let's write down what that matrix would look like here. So I want to show it's not invertible. So if BA equals identity matrix, what dimension will this matrix have to have this identity? It'll be a two by two. So this will be I2. So if BA equals I2, then B is invertible. Uh, and I should write for some for some A. What dimensions does the A matrix have to have? So we'll, we'll do a dimensional analysis here. So B is 2 by 2. I is 2 by 2. So what? how many rows does A need to have? Two. two. So our inner dimensions have to match. Now how many columns? Two. two. And that two comes from the outer two over here. They're technically all twos, but it's important to know which two matches with, with which other two. Um, and for completeness, the first two matches up with the other first two. There we go. Now it looks like we're making football plays or something. All right. That's probably more than we need. All right. So I know what the matrix A is going to look like. Let's go ahead and write out a generic matrix. So I'll let A equal, let's just do A, B, C, D. Uh, if you do come from a calculus class, you can now use the letter D all you want. If you take calculus, D is reserved for derivative. If you're not going to be taking derivatives, use D however much you want to. So we'll use lowercase d as much as we want. All right, so we're going to multiply by A, B, C, D, and try to get this matrix over here. How can we show this is impossible? We're trying to show there's no such matrix. So what I did is I suppose there was one. It would have to be this dimension and have four entries in it. How do I show there's no way that we can get four numbers that will have this property? Three variables. Well, so we kind of have four variables now. So let's go ahead and multiply. So we're going across the first down the second matrix. So I have A plus 2C, that will be my upper left entry, my upper right will be B plus 2D, lower left is 2A plus 4C, lower right is 2B plus 4D. So 
any questions on that right there? So we're looking at one matrix equals, an, equals another. They each have four elements in them. If matrices are equal, then each element is equal to the corresponding element of the other one. So we're really looking at four equations right here. So let's write out the four. So the upper left is A plus 2C equals 1. Upper right, I'm going to try to order these nicely. A plus 2C equals 1. B plus 2D equals 0. And then 2A plus 4C equals 0. And 2B plus 4D equals 1. So any questions on those taking that system from the matrix equation? All right, solve the system. So you're going to have an A, B, C, D, and then a constant. And you'll notice when I write constant, I usually don't just use the letter C because sometimes I'm going to use the letter C for actual uh, variable. So I would like to write out the word or the abbreviation const or constant. Why can I stop here? So I have an inconsistent row right there. I don't even need to do the fourth row. As soon as you see inconsistency, you can say there's no solution to the system. So we got no solution, AKA inconsistent. So let's take this algebraic result back up to the question that was asked. So any, any questions on our matrix operation <coughs> or why we get no solution? So we're just looking for that zero row with not zero at the ends. All right, so we're gonna go back up. What we tried to do, we said, hey, just let A, B, C, and D be any, any four numbers. And we just found out there's no four numbers with that property. So we can say there are, uh, there's no matrix that's the inverse of the matrix B. There's no possible matrix that's gonna give us the identity. So there is no possible uh, inverse to that matrix B. Now we're going to do a uh, proof that the uh, inverse is unique. All right, the inverse of A is unique. And the way we're going to prove this So let A be an invertible matrix. So what that means is there is an inverse. Uh, 
Uh, let's call this matrix uh, B. Usually we would call it A inverse. Uh, and I'm just going to call it B. What we're going to do to show there can't be two inverses, we're going to suppose there's a second matrix that has the same inverse properties. And I'll call it C. there's another matrix that is also the inverse of A. And we'll call it C. So let's write down the properties. So if I multiply A times B, because B is the inverse, I will get the identity matrix in whatever dimensions we're in. I'll just say we're in n dimensions. And if I multiply the other order, BA will also equal IN. Now I said there's also a matrix C that was had the same inverse properties. So and AC equals IN and CA equals IN. And what I'm trying to do is show that B is equal to C. So I'm going to try to show that B is equal to C. Now, when we're trying to show that B is the same as C, you can't start out by assuming B is C. Which side of the equation is more simple? Doesn't matter. So let's just put C in a box right there. I'm going to turn B into C. All right, how in the world are we going to do that? Let's look here above. Remember, A times B cancels to the identity. So AB equals I. So how can I turn B into the identity? The answer is multiply it on the left by A. Actually, this, we'll see. We're going to do this proof slightly differently. I'm going to turn. No, we'll do it. We'll do it the way we usually do it. So I'm going to multiply on the left by A. All right, what is wrong with what I did? I need to do it to both sides. What would I tell you about identities? Can't do it to both sides. So I need to multiply by something. But the something needs to be 1. In matrix world, that means the something needs to be the identity. So what I'm going to do is multiply by IN. That's the same as multiplying by 1. It's not going to change it. Now what I'm going to do is take out IN and replace it with one of the four options above. The one I want to replace it with, I want an A to be right next to B. So the version I'm going to use, I have two choices. I could either use BA or CA. Let's go with I think CA because I want to turn this into uh, C. So I'm going to use the one that brings in a C instead of one that brings in a B. So I'm using that CA right there. Now I'm going to reassociate. So I move my parentheses over, you're allowed to associate across multiplication, but you can't change the order. You can't commute. What is AB? Identity, identity. So we have C times IN, and that identity matrix doesn't affect C, so that's just C right there. So we just showed that if there is an inverse and another inverse, they're actually the same. So any inverse is going to, there is just one inverse. 
All right, so the inverse is unique. Uh, so I want to warn you about notation. Do not write A inverse uh, as 1 over A. So there is no division. So if you write 1 over A, you're going to think about division. There is no division. Some matrices have inverses. And uh, when they do, we're going to write it as A to the negative first, not <coughs> 1 over A. In numbers, with numbers we do this, but we're not going to do that with matrices. Now we're going to look at the algebraic properties of A inverse. So what would you get if you inverse twice? A. You would get A. So basically if you undid twice, you'll undo the undo and go back to the original. So a scalar, so alpha A inverse. What ends up happening here is your power can be distributed to both. You are allowed to write numbers as 1 over alpha. So we can write uh, the reciprocal of alpha is 1 over alpha, but A is a matrix, so I can't write A inverse as 1 over A. The inverse of a product, very similar to transposing, reverses the order. So you can distribute the power, but it reverses the order. And now if you have transposes and inverses, they play very well together, you can trade the order. So transpose inverse is the inverse transpose. And last up, a to the nth power inverse, you can change the order. That's the same as a inverse to the nth power, which means the order of those two operations doesn't matter. They commute. So you can now write a to the negative n, meaning if it's a to the negative 2, that's a inverse squared. So this is how inverses and powers work. Now if you're wondering, oh, it sounds kind of weird, let's just go back to the good old days with numbers. So if I had 5 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 5 squared, 1 over 25. No problem. That's all we're doing. That's all we're talking about here. Just the inverse and then apply the power. Of course, numbers are very easy to invert. There is a number that doesn't have an inverse. What number has no inverse? Zero. It's the only number has no inverse. Now it turns out most matrices have no inverse. So very, the math gets very different because you can't just cancel products. It's our last property. All right. So let's do some actual matrix algebra. So we're going to solve for x in the equation a inverse bx inverse equals a inverse b cubed squared. All right, I see x. It's right here. Good news is there's only one x. So let's go about getting rid of all of x's friends. We need to pay attention to the order of operations. Do I take care of that b, the negative, so I'll circle these things, the b, the negative first, or the multiplication by a inverse? What do I do first? This is just regular algebra rules. What would you do first if you're doing regular algebra? The product outside. So outside the parentheses, what we're going to do first, just order of operations. All 
All right, you've seen PEMDAS before? Yes. So please excuse my dear asshole sister. Good news is there's no more D and there's no more S. <laughs> so you can say the analogy or the um, acronym if you want to. Uh, why did I erase what the D's division? There is no more division. Well, there wasn't division in the first place. There's only multiply by the reciprocal, but we call it division for some reason. There is no subtraction. You can add a negative. So addition, subtraction is the same thing. Here's adding negatives. Division is really just multiplying by the reciprocal. So here's our order of operations. Uh, we need to take care of basically the parentheses at the end. So we're taking out the A inverse. All right, how do I get rid of A inverse? Multiply both sides by A. I have to be careful. What happens if I multiply both sides on the right by A? That's not what I want to do. Now it's important that you multiply the correct side by A. So you can't just say multiply by A. You have to say multiply what side by A? So we're specifically multiplying the left side by A. Be a, it could be a major sort of vector, actually, depending on. I mean, a scalar or a inverse. That's a good question. Technically, that'll only matter on the very, very last step. For all the uh, rules, same. In, until we deal with the that product, it won't actually matter. Okay. Um, I think I intended it to be a matrix here not a scalar. All right, so what is A times A inverse? Identity. identity. So this is I. You can just write I. You don't have to write IN unless the dimension is super important at that moment. So I'm just going to write I BX inverse equals A. Let's square this A inverse B Q. No, let's leave it alone. All right, we're almost solved for x. All right, how do I get rid of that negative first? So I could distribute inside. So we got x inverse, b inverse. So remember, when you distribute it, you're going to reverse the order. Now, when you're doing algebra, you don't have to rewrite sides that aren't changing. So I should be lazier than I'm being. I should not be rewriting the right side all these times if I'm not changing it. All right, next step. What do I do next? Multiply the right side by B. So I got to get the B inverse out. So I'm multiplying the right by B. And I'm going to denote that. We'll find the right by B. All right, we're almost there. What's the last step? How do you get rid of that negative first power? I c so I could multiply by X on both sides. That would be one option. And then I would have identity on the left and an x on the right. And then I can divide out, or not divide, uh-oh. Multiply the inverse of this big ugly thing right here. There's another thing I could do. I could apply the negative first power to both sides. That's another option. So I could either multiply on the left by or the right by x, or I could raise both sides to negative first power. So let's, doesn't matter which we do, let's just take everything to the negative first power. And 
and I can apply that negative first power. It's going to change all the order here. <clears throat> Alright, solve for x. There we go. Yes, there's some powers I could simplify if I wanted to, but I think that's good enough for us. Yeah, so I didn't show you that rule, but uh, multiplication is, uh, is associative, so if we just look at something a little, basically a, the simplest version of what we just did. Uh, I didn't give you this rule, so what we're going to do is this, so we can use the rules that, that we have. So. I will move C's on the left and then A, B, inverse like that. And now I can apply the inverse to the A, B product. Like that. So basically if you have associativity, you can look at the operation, you could look at three products in a row if you know it's associative by treating two and then the one separately. Um, and you're in big trouble mathematically if you don't have associativity. Communitivity, we can deal with not having communitivity. When you lose associativity, things go a little crazy. Because that means the order, not the order that you add them, but which ones you add to which other one first matters. All right, this is a good place to end. We're going to start with elementary matrices next. And we'll look back at row operations from a multiplicative perspective.